So I want to talk a little bit about uh, Tai Chi, Tai Chi Chuan, and uh, some of the, I think some of the subtler aspects to how I see Tai Chi working, um, according to, well, I guess as much as anything, the experience I've had, or the way that I work, or um, the way that I teach, or, or through interactions with the with the teachers I've had over the years, which I've had quite a quite a few, quite a number of Tai Chi teachers, um, some very good, uh, some doing their best, you know, uh, when I was younger, and, and of course, I think as much as anything with Tai Chi, you end up kind of trying to piece together how something works. It's a little different with um, Nei Gong, it's a little different with alchemy. I think with those two subjects, you very much need to have a very focused lineage and a, a teacher that can that can help you and, and guide you. It's it's a bad idea in those kind of arts to me in meditation, Negong, alchemy to really kind of bring too many things together, too many sources. I think it can be a problem. But actually for something like Tai Chi, uh, some teachers would disagree and maybe they're right, but I, th I think you end up uh, kind of looking to various sources because Tai Chi is one of those arts that's that's quite difficult to grasp and of course so many people have so many different views of it but also you're not going to harm yourself in the same way that you would with alchemy if you kind of look around and see what people are doing so consequently with regards to um taiji i've had um a number of teachers at different times i will say that um originally you know my foundation in tai chi did come from uh, two key teachers really so these people taught me the structure how to move, how to uh, you know understand the shapes of the form and things like this, and then gradually what happens with Tai Chi was I, I went to it was my obsession for a long time, so I went to lots of different um, teachers across China, Southeast Asia, within the Huan Xin Shan lineage, um, different Yang lineages really, Chen Village, Chen Style, you know lots uh, Huni Wen from Feng Zichong, uh, all his students. So I went to lots of different ends to try to understand Tai Chi. So. I really want to talk a little bit about like, you know, how I see it working. But first I want to make that clear that I'm not really a purist in Tai Chi. I am very much with alchemy actually in Nadan. I'm, I'm very down the line for how the tradition should work and I do what I was taught. But my Negong is not, uh, my Tai Chi, sorry, is not pure. It's very much a, um, a journey of exploration, you know. Lots of years in my teens learning the forms and things and then, but then really the internal subtle skills um, I went to lots of people to try to understand and, I, and really all of the people I've met who are what I would consider experts or very good at Tai Chi, they've had to do something similar generally. They've, they've gone to different teachers to try to understand something like every time they pushed hands with someone who was exceptionally skilled, they kind of absorbed uh, some of what they do, some of what they, they, they teach and that's really how Tai Chi works. You know, you get to a certain stage of skill where it's the touching hands with people that you really kind of you learn from, you know, you learn in that way. So whenever I do a talk on Tai Chi, because I do lots of talks on YouTube, don't I, of different things, um, normally about Qigong or medicine or Negong or something like this, but whenever I do Tai Chi ones, people get angry because they say too much talking, why aren't you doing something? Um, well, I want to point out now, before you go any further into this video, that I'm going to be talking about Tai Chi, not doing Tai Chi, um, because that's what the nature of this video is. It's a discussion. You know, many of my videos on here were podcasts originally, so they were sound recordings that were listened to on iPhones and things, so <laughs> obviously they had to be based upon talking. But now I end up using YouTube as a place, really. I share some stuff. There's a lot of Qigong exercises shared on our channel um, for people to help them it might get the basics of sort of foundation of the practices. Um, so there's a lot on there, but really what I use YouTube for is uh, really to sort of discuss ideas and explore concepts. And I think that if you're a beginner in Tai Chi, it's gonna be difficult to understand some of this. Some are probably not so useful. And maybe for beginners, you need um, just videos of people doing things, how to step, how to form the rollback, how to form the press or whatever. But I think for advanced practitioners who already have all of that, um, these kind of discussions can be useful because maybe you listen to something and because you already have a practice, you can kind of apply it to what you're doing or maybe you listen and you disagree um, and that's okay too because maybe that will send you off on an exploration of your own. But really this is my place where I just kind of share ideas um, according to how I'm working at this any given time. So this is a talk on Tai Chi. And what I want to talk about really is um, the difficulty of 
getting some of the internal qualities, especially these qualities of release, or sometimes people call it song, or the quality of filling or mobilizing the force um, through the body in Tai Chi, because it, it can be complicated. And I think there's a, there's a key. Mm. In my opinion, there's a, there's a little key, a little knack, a quality that I think if people took on board, they might, um, they might find actually, okay, this is something that I'm looking for in Tai Chi, specifically for Yang style, Wu style as well, I would guess, or any of Yang styles derivatives, I would say that it applies. Essentially, in Tai Chi, most people would know that you're trying to um, relax or release or take unnecessary tension out of the body. Now, of course, that gets translated in lots of different ways, doesn't it? Because for some people, they just try to become as soft as they possibly can when they're moving. How, how soft can I make my body? Till eventually it becomes um, almost like spaghetti or something in the limbs. Um, to other people, they apply it in a way that I want to relax and release to stretch the joints and elasticate the body. That's another way that people apply it. Or other people, um, they want to relax as much of the sort of large muscles as they can so that the deeper parts of the muscle bodies have to work more. So it's almost like strength training, really, in a weird way. You relax to create this kind of building of the center of the muscle. There's others as well, relax to elasticate and <laughs> all sorts of things. Like, there's all different models. And so funnily enough, like even those four physical models of how to relax are not the same, you know, not, not the same. You see, some people relax and hang on their joints. So the power is kind of hung on the joints, whereas other people will hold the joints and then relax between the joints. So essentially the muscle, the idea is that it hangs from the bone and it creates a stretch between the joints. There's so many different models. It's crazy. And when I started out, I started out in um, the Chen Manqing systems and the Huan Xian Qian systems, which are very similar, um, but almost the same, because obviously Chen, Chen Manqing taught Huan Xian Qian, but he had his own take on it because of the White Crane influence. So I started there, and then um, I went across into different versions of the Yang system. I went to a very esoteric one for a while. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> it was definitely a a sort of deviation from what the other lines were doing. And then from there, I went into some of the Southeast Asian lines and explored what they were doing. Um, I went to China and explored the Yang style, uh, very much as it's practiced uh, in the north of China there, and then across to Chen Village and tried what they were doing. And then some of the esoteric ones from the Taoist branches, particularly the Long Menpai, Tai Chi as well. <coughs> so I had quite a sort of broad experience. And of course, while I was in these schools, I would meet all different people who were practicing um, in different ways. And I would go to see, of course, if ever I saw a seminar with someone who was very interesting, I would go and see them. I saw Ma Yu Liang students from the Wu style. That was really interesting working with them. I met Patrick Kelly. Um, he was fun to work with and just see how he was working. And obviously, he's got a bit of a sort of history of Huang Xinxian style. And I, I didn't stay with um, him for very long. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't, um, you know, claim him as a teacher anymore than he would claim me as a student. It was just somebody I met and I, I went to for a few days to work with him and so he worked. So it's all those kind of things. And it was really interesting seeing all the different models of relaxation. Like how is that term translated by different groups? Because it's amazing, just the term relax. You can do that in so many ways. There's so many different ways to do it. And of course I have a way that I teach my students to physically relax and, and somebody else has a way to teach their students to physically relax. And, and if something so simple as that can get interpreted in different ways, a mechanical thing, relax the muscles. Of course, there are many, you know, all of the deeper principles in Tai Chi can be interpreted in so many different ways too. And then you can understand a little bit about why there's so much infighting in Tai Chi as well. Because of course, what happens is whatever somebody's perspective is, whatever their point of view, of course, they're going to think that theirs is the correct one. Um, in the majority cases or they wouldn't be doing it. So therefore all of the others are wrong. So there's almost a frustration you can see where people are saying, well, this is what I do. Why don't you do it like that? And, uh, and there's all this headbutting between people. And I think sometimes they'll say, well, I'm relaxed and you're not relaxed, but they don't understand that actually that person has interpreted the instruction of relax different to you. There's a ton of different ways you can relax the body because relaxation is only one cause. It's one cause, and there's other causes too that are put in place, including the shape of the body, the structure, the mental quality at any given time, 
um, the, the way that you're breathing, like just the, the intent, the aim of your relaxation. So all of these are different causes as well. And when all of those causes come together, what it creates is a different result because all training is based on cause and effect. Relaxation is one cause. When mixed with other causes, it produces different effects. So ultimately, what you're going to get is so many different expressions of, of <laughs> what Tai Chi might be. And remember, only talking about relaxation. What about when we start talking about things like Pung, which is a lot more complicated? What about Jiang Ding? What about filling the body with Qi? What about sinking the Qi? What about Song, which is more complex than relax? So all of those terms are going to produce a whole spectrum of ways that Tai Chi can be expressed because you're not going to do it in the same way. It's, it almost feels to me a little bit like in Tai Chi some people don't see just how many almost infinite ways that you can express anything within your body. The body is amazingly complex and amazingly intricate and it, it's just this whole breadth of ways that you can interpret any teaching. So of course there's going to be huge variations and every teacher is going to do things different way. So what I'm going to share with you is my way of doing it. But what I'm not going to tell you is that <laughs> mine is the only way, or mine is the best way, or mine is the correct way. What I'm going to say is this is the way that I do it, and this is the way that I teach it, and this is the way that I started doing after the experience that I had. This is my current interpretation of how to make Tai Chi work, and it's what I tend to share with the people that I teach. So before we look at that, we have to understand that of course, they talk about Tai Chi being an internal art. And really, if we want to define what internal means, there's arguments about it. And some people say there's no historical basis for the term internal versus external within Chinese martial arts. And that might be true, but whether it has a historical basis or not, it is definitely used nowadays. It is a term that is used now. I know that because I've been to lots of different, what you might consider external and in internal martial arts practitioners and they will very clearly define the way they are teaching and the way they are doing things as internal or external. So to me, internal doesn't mean using the chi. That's not something, uh, that's not what I would define it as because there's external arts that talk about chi as well. Internal to me means that there is a specific mechanism that operates the movements of your body. So an external mechanism would be a very standard one, how you operate on a day-to-day -day basis is external usually, which is normally based on what muscular contraction and leverage. It's like logical. If you look up the physiology of how the body functions with regards to nerves and muscles and leverage and contraction, that's external. Okay, That's what we would call an external body mechanic. There's nothing wrong with it, not at all. Um, it's very efficient, especially if you stress that system, ultimately it gets stronger and stronger and stronger. Weightlifting is based upon that. Um, external martial arts are often based upon that, stressing that mechanism in a particular way so it grows stronger. But internal arts to me work in a different way because they have to be based upon the process of release. They have to be based upon the process of release. Not relaxation to me. Like I think relaxation is of secondary importance to release. Um, because I'm going to have to qualify what I mean by that, aren't I? I? I mean, I guess it is relaxation, but my problem with it is that we have things attached to the idea of relaxation, right? So if, I, if, if you were to just talk to your friends and family or even to think what you think of when you say the word relax, you might think, well, I'm, I'm relaxed on this couch. You know what I mean? This is, <laughs> this is relaxing. It's very comfortable here. A little hot because it's Thailand, but... Fairly, fairly relaxed, or I relax in the bath, or I relax in the swimming pool, or I relax in the evening, or, or whatever, after I've done whatever I need to do, or I relax with friends, or alcohol can relax you. You know, we have, there's a certain quality that is shared between all of those experiences, right, that has a degree of switching off to it to me. And that's, to me, not what we do in Tai Chi, not really. Or in Tai Chi practice, we release, which is not quite the same. So Song, to me, means to let go, which will generate a particular result that is not the same as relaxation. Because what happens when I release properly, in my opinion, I want to make that really clear because I, I'm not preaching to you saying that I've mastered this and you haven't. It's, it's not that. This is my interpretation and this is my idea. Um, and I want to make that really clear because 
Otherwise, what will happen is people will see this and people, I know people have quite <laughs> fragile egos, to be perfectly honest. So if they hear something's different from what they're doing, they get very worked up, like, like it's a personal attack or something. And then they have to comment, no, you're not doing the blah, 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 like all this kind of stuff. And uh, uh, you shouldn't worry, like, don't feel threatened. I'm not threatening you or, or anything. I'm saying this is my personal experience and this is how I practice and this is how the people who I teach do it. Because we don't, so don't, don't worry, we're not, not trying to belittle what you're doing, it's just we have a different way, you know, as I'm sure you have a logic to yours. What we're doing when we release is we let go of something within the body, okay, and I'll explain how, and the result is that something will stretch inside the body, this is the key. But the stretch is not done under the force of gravity, curiously, so it's not like I it's not like I release and I sink to stretch everything aside. I release and I sink till it opens. Okay, everything expands. And as it expands from inside, what it does is it opens and creates space inside the body, creates space inside the joints. It lengthens all of the... Is it fascia? Is it not? I don't know, probably. Don't even know what the definition of that term is. It elasticates all the tissues and lengthens out the nerves. So the analogy that I often talk about or it's invisible you know is that when people have their arms up and whatever like a jam jong shape or a wood shape or, or whatever i'm just lazily putting my arms up and if they relax then of course what happens is everything closes right because your power is holding it open so everything sort of comes in whereas if i song actually everything opens it goes out the, the counter to what you would think, because obviously if I'm out here with my arms and I relax, they're going to come in and down. But if I'm out here with my arms and I song, then they lengthen, okay? But the lengthening is not done by me. This is the key. I'm not lengthening my arm. I am simply switching off. I am songing and releasing inside. And the result is that something stretches and something lengthens. So the song creates the stretch, but the stretch is not created under the force of gravity. It's created because everything opens up. And that opening can actually produce <laughs> the opposite of relaxation. It's very curious. This is why I say it's not, it's not relaxing, because when I release, the opening creates pressure. It's like the ribs open and the shoulder opens. It reshapes your body from the inside. It's like a real inflated, hydraulic, feeling expansive. It's like there's a bicycle pump that's blowing up your body. So when I'm doing Tai Chi, I don't like to go down when I song. I like to go out when I song, but I don't make the out. That is the key. The out is created because everything expands. So that's a, that's a thing, right? How to get the expansion from letting go? Because you would have thought to get bigger, you have to move, right? But it's none action that creates the space. And We'll get into that in a second. But the more I do this, the more I release to create space, release to create space, release to create space, it's like it habitually builds into your body because your body obviously has a plasticity to it. It can store patterns. We can see that because if I sat playing video games or whatever people do or using an iPad like this day in, day out, then people's body reshapes, right? Your neck reshapes. You get a hump on the back of your neck and all of that, and you get a terrible posture. So bodies will reshape and then store the pattern. You can often see what work people do, can't you, from their posture. You can see, oh, that person sits down all day, or this person is lifting heavy things all day. Your body reshapes. It's the same with uh, Tai Chi, you know, like the more I release Han Song and release Han Song and release Han Song, so it opens, 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 not down, okay? I don't want my Tai Chi collapsed. Out, 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 out. The, the bigger your body gets, but it's, it's not fat, not a belly. The belly is from food <laughs> essentially it's it's just it's in the joints it's out there is a, a puffiness to the muscles and the joints all over like it's inflated and a, a firmness to the body as well that's there in pung and if you know what you're looking for you can see it you can see if someone has pung or not it has pung or doesn't have pung it's not in their body weight and it's not in the shape that they make with the postures it's just it's a quality that's there in their body that you can see or, or not once you know what it is and this pung quality, what it does is as it expands the body out, it changes the fashion of what happens when you and another person touch. And then you have pung on contact. So pung is all over the body and just means that everything is opened up. Because the more I expand, the more we can say the chi, 
for want of a better word, fills that space and the body fills up and fills up and fills up with chi. So that's pung, right? So why is it not normal to relax or switch off and get the body to open? Because it, it's very rare that you have someone who comes along that knows how to do this. Like normally they come into a Tai Chi class and they say with me or something, and I don't teach Tai Chi very often. I mostly teach in Qigong these days because that's where my interest lies, Qigong and Neigong. But when I do teach Tai Chi, you get people come in and they say, oh, I've done Tai Chi 20 years, 30 years or, or whatever. But they've often never encountered that opening that comes from letting go. So when I tell them to open the body, they physically open or, or I tell them to relax, they, they sort of collapse or, or slump this principle of stacking the bones, which I don't like, because it essentially means that gravity is closing everything. Yeah? To me, when you song, you should go against gravity. Everything should open up. Now, the reason they don't have it, in, in my experience, and again, I'm not saying it's right, it's just saying it's how I do it, and how I teach it. The reason they don't tend to have it in their arts is because, and this is the key, this is the point of the whole video. <laughs> Sorry it took me so long to get here is that they're trying to do the technique in their body. That's the problem. You can't. You can't do the technique in your body. The technique is done in your mind. This is the key. It's done in your mind, not your body. It's another facet of internal arts that's very, very important, is that it's all about what happens in your awareness, what happens in your consciousness, what happens in your attention. That is where almost all of the Tai Chi principles are done. So beyond the basics, like lining up your body. So you see people discussing complex Tai Chi mechanics and often what they talk about is, well, I do this with my spine and then I do this with my tailbone and maybe I re sort of shape my shoulders this way and then I position the elbow here and then I turn my waist and really fast, like, or whatever they do. It's all body techniques. And the problem is that to me, Sung is not based in the body. It's based in the mind because if, you, if you've ever seen any of my other videos on here, you know that the quality of your attention is all important to me. To me, that's the key of internal practice. What is the nature of your attention? Can you listen? Can you be attentive? And, and most people cannot. They're not listening. What most people are doing are intending, even if they don't mean to. So when they put their mind into their body, there is an intention there that they're not aware of. That intention might be whatever their emotional state is in the background. It's like this. It's like if I've been angry all day and I've been pissed off about a terrible day, I'm hateful because I've had to deal with all these difficult things and I'm very, very stressed. And then I think, you know what? I'll do Tai Chi tonight. So I do my form. I switch off. I do the form and I'm listening to my body and I think, oh, this is nice. What you don't realize is in the background somewhere, all that anger and that stress is still there. It's still there because it's, it, it's, it's a part of you, it's a part of your lens, it's a part of the personality you're carrying across. So that intention is there. So you're not really releasing. It doesn't matter how much you listen to your body and you try to relax your body, you're still not going to change that quality of mind. You have to relax and release the quality of mind to influence the body. People have that the wrong way around. They think if I move my body in a relaxed way, it'll relax. No, to a certain degree. Okay, to a certain degree, but not to a deep level. It's the mind to influence the body, not the body to influence the mind in Tai Chi, in my opinion. So our first step really is, first of all, we need a really good interface between the mind and the body. They must be entwined. They must be fully integrated. So it's not just a case of here is your body, think of your body or imagine your body or put your mind in your body. You can't, like people can't. When they start, they can't. If you could see a a drawing sort of shaded in. If I could shade in my body as a beginner of where my mind is, it would be patchy. It's like maybe I can feel my face and <laughs> maybe I'm aware where my hips and my knees are, but I can't feel anything between them and I can't feel my ribs. And it's like we're, we're patchy. The, the mind and the body are disconnected. It's like areas my mind can get into and areas I can't. And most people are like that for a really long time. So you can see that, I mean, coordination as much as anything. And normally what people can feel is their hands, feet, maybe their, maybe their joints, and then anywhere that's in pain. <laughs> that's what they feel. And then the rest of the time, there's a real disconnect between mind and body. And I've known people that have done martial arts practice for a long time that are still in that state because they think, or there is a view, I had this view as well, you know, there's a view that you just kind of do the arts and eventually the mind-body will come or connection will come or 
or that it's so easy that it doesn't need much practice. But that mind-body connection that you need in Tai Chi takes time. So where we practice it is the standing, or this is where I do, or this is where I practice it and this is where I teach it, is in the standing. Because what you do is you stand in whatever, your Wuji posture or whatever you have in your system, and you gradually soak the mind through the body. It's like you're sinking your awareness from the top down through your body over and over again. Hours and hours and hours, just soaking the mind through the body, soaking the mind through the body. Um, after a while, what will happen is you get something called sinking the chi, which there's a, a, an experience of something moving down to gather lower in the body. Sinking the chi really to me means, some people would say it's very literally like there's an energy that goes to the Dantian, but to me sinking the chi is really the somatic experience of you successfully letting go with your intention until the mind goes down and fills the body. And the result is that your nerves feel as if something is running down and things start to open up inside the torso. So it feels as if there's an energy flowing down. And this is what we call sinking the chi. Different, some teachers will sink it to the dantian, some to the floor. There's variations, you know, people have different ways of doing it. I don't think one is right or wrong. It's just a different method. I've seen teachers that make both work and then both those teachers will slaggy the other one's method off, but they both made it work. So I think as much as anything, that's a, a nuance rather than an incorrection where people sink to. It's just a personal preference for people. So when the mind soaks through and soaks through and soaks through, and the intention is let go of till I'm just paying attention and listening, then you get that sensation of something sinking, the chi will sink. That's quite rare. A lot of Tai Chi people will struggle with that from what I've seen. Certainly at the beginning, you know, it's a difficult concept. And then gradually, what it means is the mind works its way into more of the body. If you've ever listened to any of my talks or studied with me, you will know that um, I talk about the body being a sponge, like a sponge, right? And the water has to soak through the sponge, and that water is your mind. But the problem is your mind doesn't want to soak through the sponge. It will do anything it can to avoid it. <laughs> it's really strange. You'll get distracted, you'll do this, you do that, or whatever, or it gets stuck. It doesn't want to go in. But when the mind soaks through the body, like water into a sponge, essentially what it does is it creates a feeling of being in your body. You are embodied. Your mind is in there and it feels like there's an energy moving through your body. And to me, the, what you're feeling essentially is like the somatic experience through the nerves of the movements of your mind felt in the body. That, I know that sounds very esoteric, but it's not really when you think about it. It's like if I put my mind in this arm, in my left arm, in my hand, if I just kind of focus on it, there's all kinds of little twitches and movements going on in my arm and my hand. It's not still, there's tinglings and things shifting around. Now, in my opinion, what I'm feeling is the nerves reacting to the quality of my attention. As my attention is moving, as my mind is not stable and it's bubbling away, it creates sensations here because I know that if I still my mind, which is difficult to do while I'm giving a, a talk, but even here where my mind goes natural, a little bit calmer towards a more stable state. The sensation stabilizes in my arm. So now it feels like there's less things moving around, like the tingling. People go, it's tingling in my hands, that's chi. That's the movements of your mind. Because actually if I go still, the tingling lessens. It's less tingling, less ants on the skin as people describe it. But now something else happens. Now it feels, my arm feels fatter. It's like the sensation in the nerves comes out, my arm feels swollen. It feels swollen because my mind is more still, as still as it can be while I'm talking like this. But if I just let my mind do what it wants and it just chatters, now the swelling feeling, like the expansion feeling goes away. And instead something, it's like tingling, rushing around. So <laughs> what I'm saying, if that makes sense, is what you are feeling is the movement of your mind in your body. You're feeling the somatic nervous system version of what you are thinking. So in this way, to me, we could say that in Tai Chi at least, a little different for Chinese medicine, a little different for Neigong, but that for me, the Tai Chi definition of Qi in, for a long time, it might change later, but the Tai Chi definition of Qi is the fluid or substance of your mind as it fills the body. That's what it is, okay? I know some of you won't like that definition because you'll say, well, what about 
these weird city esoteric things I've seen. And yeah, okay, later. But at the beginning, for a long time in the beginning, the chi is the fluid of the mind. And the mind has to soak like a fluid into the body to fill your body with chi, really, which means to fill your body with mind. This is why people who meditate or do mindfulness, sati training or whatever, tend to find that the internal side of Tai Chi comes quicker. I think it's very hard to do Tai Chi without a meditation practice. People say Tai Chi is moving meditation. I disagree. I think Tai Chi is moving meditation if you've got some meditative <laughs> training behind you. I think it should be there too. Because the more I can still the mind and listen and achieve mindfulness, the ability to stabilize my awareness into an object, then my body becomes the object that my awareness is stabilized into. And then my mind fills the body and I am filled with Chi. Okay, essentially the fluid of the mind. So when I stand, I got to let go of all the sort of knotted up tension that's like a block that the mind can't get into. That's got to be let go of. And I got to let go of all the tension in the mind and give it time, time to soak in till it's through my whole body. And to me, that's the most useful part of standing, not building a posture into my body or something like this, but building the mind into the body so the two connect. I do a lot of this work with people who study with me. This is what I do for a, a while with them, you know, to get them to feel mind in the body, mind in the body, mind in the body. The two have to come together, your mind and your body, they have to merge. And it's not a natural thing, weirdly, should be, shouldn't it? But it, it's not for human beings. If they don't do the training or they haven't been through the process, the majority of times people's mind will not be in their body. Once the mind is in the body, now we can start song because what Sung is to me is as I move, now that my mind is in my body, I can incrementally release the tension in my mind. The, I can release the instability in my mind. I can release the hidden, subtle intention that's hidden behind my mental awareness. And as I release that, it will then create a change in the body. If my mind is not in my body, then I can release my mind all I want. And it doesn't really affect the body that much, maybe a little bit, but it affects it in a conventional way, like you relax, come out of fight or flight, nerves release. But it's different once the mind is soaked into the body, which is where the mindfulness or the meditative training comes in. Because once my body is filled with mind chi, <laughs> for want of a better term, when I release my mind and I release my awareness, I feel it straight away. In the same way that when I'm erat my mind is in the arm and my mind is erratic and everything is tingling, when I'm in the body and I'm stable and I'm moving and I just let go of the hidden intention or the, the sort of all of the intent within my mind and I just listen and pay attention, the closer I move towards releasing into complete mental relaxation whilst maintaining mental stability, the more my body will open up it will open up as a result of what my mind is doing. I don't have to do any clever twists or pulls. It's just the mind in the body. And then the more I do this, you'll find that that's where the expansion comes from. The expansion from inside comes from a released mind interacting with the body. So now when I relax, instead of collapsing, mind is in the body. Okay. When I release and I relax, everything opens up and gets wider. So now the opening comes and then the filling begins. Okay, this is the process of filling. So I release through the action of song in my mind. Okay, my awareness is stabilized into the body. I am listening, ting, into my own body. Then the more I release song, then the more everything opens up. It's just a quality of release deep in the tissues, deep in the nerves that can only come from the mind letting go. And that fills and opens up the body. Now, to me, that is the key. That's the key to like almost all of the internal mechanism of Tai Chi, that it doesn't matter what you do with your body beyond a certain point. You have to have your postures correct and what have you. But if you want the internal release to come, it has to happen up here. It has to happen in the mind. We could go deeper into this, you know, because of course, there's concepts such as yin and yang that are relevant to Tai Chi and the idea of Tai Chi is yin and yang exist at the same time moving in a harmonious fashion with one another and then people try to understand what that is is that up and down in the body or left and right in the body or is it relaxation and hardness and people say oh tai chi is soft and hard as in i relax sometimes then i go hard maybe but to me that's just an external style like i think all external styles do that when i did karate we had 
soft and hard movements. When I did Wing Chun, we had soft and hard movements. When I did Long Fist, we had soft and hard movements. White Crane, soft and like there's nothing unique to Tai Chi about that. To be relaxed is physically relaxed. It's not unique to Tai Chi. That, that's normal for martial arts. Like that that should be there. The Yin Yang to me is more to do with qualities of mind that are embodied within your form in Tai Chi. That's really what it's about. So at any given moment, Tai Chi should have yin and yang present. And I can't say for each move what each of the yin and yang will be because it will vary and yin and yang is shifting. But as a start point, to me, the stabilizing quality, perhaps we say the yang quality, is your mindfulness, your awareness being stabilized into the body, as in the mind chi, the fluid of your mind is stable into your structure, paying attention to your body so that you are filling the nerves and filling the tissues with your mind. This is the yang, the structure. The yin aspect is another part of your awareness is releasing. And as it's releasing against that stabilized awareness into your structure, then it starts to create the mobilization of yin and yang within the center of the body. Okay. Obviously this changes because you have other factors, people pushing on you and push hands and things like this. But this is a start point to me. So, made that clear again, part of your mind must be stable into the structure of your form, soaked in. It's not enough to just go think about my form. I have to do the work to soak the mind in. Your mind really is like a fluid that must get into that sponge. And then when I listen to the body, that stabilizing of the structure, the structure is held together. It's in, it's, the integrity of the structure is contained by the mind being soaked into the body. And then if you like, another part of your awareness or the same part of your awareness, whatever, you know, it's just a model, isn't it? To talk about the mind in different ways, must release and let go incrementally. And as that happens, that release process combined with the stabilization of mind into the body mobilizes yin and yang. And this starts to move the jin or the chi, however you want to define it. I define them as two different things, but the jin or chi through the body as you move. And this to me is the basis of the internal mechanism of tai chi. Now I'll stop here because it's already been quite long and I know people are saying he just talks, he just talks, he just talks, he never does anything. But actually that's not true. I produce uh, literally hundreds and hundreds of hours of practical footage. It's just YouTube is my place where I talk about things. Um, it's not the platform. I tend to put lots of stuff out there that tends to go in within my school. But I, I do do a lot of practical footage. But here I like to discuss ideas and concepts. And my hope is that some people, this might jog something in them that makes sense. Maybe they're at a stage where they need to hear this, or perhaps they're at a stage where they've already started to do it a little bit and they didn't really know what it was. Because sometimes you need something confirmatory. It's like, oh, I can feel, oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I'm feeling and that's it. And then other people hear it and go, nah, nonsense. It's all about turning the waist and pushing into the ground with my back leg. And fine, that's okay. It, it, it all depends on where you are. These are just me. Uh, sharing uh, some thoughts and having an informal chat because I like to talk because I've got verbal diarrhea. So hopefully this, to some people at least, will make sense as to how I view the connection between mind body and how we song rather than just let go and relax. You know, a very different thing. I want that expansion. I want that opening from the quality of mind. But we have to remember, to leave you with this, that it won't matter what you do with your mind. Well, <laughs> other than you'll feel better, but it won't matter to your Tai Chi what you do with your mind until you have the mind fluid really soaked through the body. So your Tai Chi has to become an embodiment of what the mind is doing. And only at that stage can I do releasing of the awareness and stabilizing the awareness so that my mind, my mental quality is expressed through the form of my body. And that's what Tai Chi is. And that's where the standing comes in because a standing is not stamina till my shoulders stop shaking. It's about giving time and space and opening the body up and releasing until the awareness can fill the body. And then you know when you're kind of done, if there is such a thing, you know what I mean? Starting to get it because that buoyancy will come in your body. It will start to open up and then you know, ah, the mind and the body are connecting. I'm starting to feel this opening from inside. And at that stage, you're starting to embody the mind and body connection, it's there. So now your physical Tai Chi is an expression of your mind. And then you can start to understand Song and how Tai Chi is governed by the Yi. And really, this to me is why they say the Yi leads the Qi. 
doesn't lead it in a linear fashion. I said, I put my mind over there and the chi goes over there. It's the quality of my awareness that guides the chi. And the quality of my awareness wants to be stabilized into the structure and then released, let go, song. And that will mobilize the chi in a big way. So that's my thoughts on uh, Tai Chi. And this is my ridiculous gold goblet in this weird hotel that I'm in. And uh, thanks very much for listening. <laughs>